around Christmas, there was a shooting in Glen Cove, Long Island, which is where Josie lives. That shooting was actually reported in the local Long Island press. It didn't name that the that the house that was shot up was was a, a owned by a Camerano, but it said that the police in Glen Cove, Long Island, believed that it was a uh, it wasn't random that it was an attack on the the owner of the property. And then I've also been told that around New Year's. Uh, one of the Cameranos or a business that was linked to one of the Cameranos was either uh, vandalized or possibly firebombed. And that the FBI is actively monitoring the situation. This all dates back to, well, it really dates back to around 2015. So it's been about eight years. Mikey Mancuso, um, you know, came up in, in the 70s as a member of the uh, East Harlem Bronx Purple Gang, which was a kind of a a farm team for a lot of uh, the five families, a lot of future bosses and capital regimes as, as young gangsters started in the purple gang and then filtered out to the uh, Genovese, the Bananos, Blue Casey's. And uh, Mikey knows Mancuso made his way up the ladder of the crime family, became a capo and then became an acting boss of the Bananos in the early 2000s, early to mid 2000s, uh, went to prison for a murder that was tied to Vinny Gorgeous, uh, Vinny Bastiano, who was the, his, his predecessor as boss of the Bananos. Um, and while he was in prison, he needed to have people on the street um, as his acting boss. He had a couple acting bosses uh, that were out of the picture by 2015. Josie, uh, whose dad was a longtime uh, major figure in the Bonanno crime family, a capo regime, uh, for a short period of time, he was underboss under Joe Massino. They called him Joe Saunders, Joe Camerano Sr. And uh, Joe, Joe Jr. or Joe C., very popular, very, you know, in, in terms of gangland politics in New York, very connected, very well liked. Mancuso was, was hesitant to let Joe C become his acting boss in 2015. But because of circumstances, attrition and whatnot, he had no choice. And he uh, had put Joe C in as his acting boss. And within a year, according to uh, court files, FBI records and sources, it became clear to Mancuso in prison that Joe C was gonna try to wrangle the crime family away from Mancuso. Um, in 2017, he called a meeting. I'm told that that meeting was, uh, took place in Long Island in uh, sometime between Memorial Day and Father's Day of uh, 2017. And he held a vote to vote himself in as boss and vote Mikey Mancuso out. He won that vote, but it was null and void because uh, the rest of the five families wouldn't sign off on it. Mancuso might have had a, a smaller faction and, and a less amount of goodwill. Uh, he's not as well liked as, as Camerano. Nonetheless, he was able to keep power. Uh, someone said to me, and I quoted him today, and it's a kind of a throwback to uh, Chaz Paul and Terry and the movie Bronx Tale. Mikey Mancuso uh, is feared. Joe C is, is beloved. Um, and this guy said to me, it's boding much better for Mikey Mancuso in this situation. It's better to be feared in this situation than to be liked because a lot of people are keeping their distance from, from the Cameranos right now because they're in such uh, fear of, of, of Mancuso and, and the fact that Mancuso has a reputation of being a bit unhinged. So this was all kind of kept quiet. Mancuso didn't even really know about the vote. He knew that there was a, a growing insurgence uh, but all this information came out about this vote in uh, at Joe C's trial. He had a racketeering trial that lasted from late 2018 into 2019. He was acquitted. Uh, but at that trial, um, there was testimony that discussed this silent power play. And Mikey Mancuso was irate and decided uh, to shelf uh, a whole bunch of Cam or to shelf the Camerano brothers and a whole bunch of their loyalists. So this all came down in around 2019 and uh, Camerano, his brother, his father-in-law, Vito Grimaldi, 
his brother-in-law, Joey Grimaldi, and uh, his his factions, Consigliere, uh, Porky, uh, Zan Zancocchio, uh, were all put on the shelf. And then things were quiet for three years. Fast forward to the summer and Vito Grimaldi dies. And even though Grimaldi was on the shelf, Mancuso wanted to interject himself and sent word uh, that uh, the Camerano's were not allowed to come to the wake or the funeral. They didn't take kindly to being told what they could and could not do in terms of the fact that all these people that Mancuso was trying to uh, subject to his orders were people that Mancuso had put on the shelf, had sidelined. So they felt like, you know, if we're not a part of the crime family, you can't tell us what to do. And they brought a biker gang with them. And you want to talk about fearless, you know, these bikers, I don't care if they're Hell's Angels or Outlaws, or in this case, they're called the Crazy Pistons. Um, they don't intimidate easily. So that's that's where we stand right now. There was this brawl at this uh, funeral parlor this summer. Things were, were kind of, it was the quiet before the storm, I guess, uh, late summer into uh, the fall. And then in this early winter, things have uh, erupted, according to my sources and um it's, it's a very, very fragile situation uh, for the Bananos in, in, um, in Mikey Nose and in Joe, in Joe C's neck of the woods.